Okay, welcome lovely listeners to um, today's episode. So today we've got the lovely Sean Beatty um, with us. And Sean, um, I know through um, a, an organization that we're both part of, SFM, which I've spoken about on previous podcasts, uh, but I don't know Sean that well. So I was really intrigued to know um, his journey and how he's got to where he's got to, because we also seem to have a shared love of coaching as well. So welcome, Sean. Thank you very much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. No, thank you. Yes, good. Um, so I, I think really for, for the benefit of the, the listeners, if you can just give them a little sort of snapshot of, of who you are, what you're doing at the moment, and then we can sort of talk about what it is that you decided that you were settling for. And, and I'm sure it could be many things, but you know, wh whatever you think. So, so who, who's Sean Beatty? What do you do? Um, Sean Beatty is, um, I'm 53. I've got two sons, so I've got family. Um, I live in Essex and I work in um, London for a, um, a fairly large construction firm. And that's my, uh, well, eight to 5.30 job. Um, that I do all the time and a couple of years ago I started doing something else which is the SFM which Mel, Mel spoke about to branch into something new but I do that um, alongside my day job so I've still got my day job um, and I juggle doing the SFM and it's had a few things that have um, um, sort of um, branched off of that since I've done it which we, we can go into but yes that's me obviously um, I normally tra travel to London, it takes about an hour and 45 minutes to get to work, so I do a lot of commuting. Um, just recently managed to work one day from home a week, so that's a Friday. Um, so yeah, busy commuting, working in London, and um, don't really like sitting down and not doing a lot. Um, I'm hobbies are sort of um, cycling, paddle boarding, um, and generally keeping fit. Um, I work out probably four or five times a week. Um, so yeah, that's probably me in a quick um, nutshell. Yes. Um, how do you find time to see the family, Sean, with all that going on? <laughs> um, yeah, no, in, in, interesting um, point. Obviously, that's always a bit of a struggle when I get in. Um, but my, my boys, two teenage boys, 14 and 16, they don't want the attention quite as much as yeah. they did. Um, but I remember like going back in the early days, obviously, the moment I did get in from work, which was like quarter to seven, that would be my time I would take over. And then until they went to bed, so all bath time, all last bit of games and reading and everything was all like me. Um, when my other half then got a chance to just relax and or not even relax, perhaps, but do the other stuff that she didn't have time for during the day. So as a dad, I, I, I didn't really see them early in the morning. Because um, I was gone before they started, but I had that little bit of time, um, especially when they were younger, um, which I think a bit was as they started to get older and they demand less of your time is probably one of the things that made me think, hang on, what else am I going to do now? Because there was an intense period from zero to 10 or 12 years old where there's a lot of it. So I did the evening stint. Obviously, I would never work weekends. I spent all weekend and we were doing stuff. They've played sport. We've gone everywhere with them. So I suppose even though it's been restricted, I did make a conscious effort. And was, I wanted, when I wanted to have kids and I had them a bit late, I was 37 when I had my first kid. But, so I was ready to devote the time I wanted to. I wanted that thing in my life. So I, I definitely um, took that on and did as much as I could in those, in those times. So I would say that family-wise, We've got that. I've got quite a strong family, so I've got a sister, and um, and she's got four kids. So there's a lot of us, and we all get together. I'm I'm a bit of the. My sister was the central pin. She had her children a lot, lot younger, so she was the central pin of the family when I was still partying and going out. And then since I've had my family been younger, I've been the central thing, and now everyone visits me. So we've both had our little times of that. But as we all know, or you'd know, depending on what stage you're at with children, you know, you get to that teenage and getting a bit older and all of a sudden they're not quite as round as, as much. And I sort of, you know, I thought to myself, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a bit more time now. What, what, what am I going to do with that? Is that is that it sort of thing, like with just my job and everything like that? So I started. I've always been into self-development and stuff like that. I've, I've done that since I was a, a bit younger, but obviously it was probably, it was probably hitting 50 hitting 50, kids getting older, and I just suddenly thought to myself, crikey, is, 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 that, is that it? What else am I going to do? And I've, I've got my job, and I, and I, I like my job. I don't like, um, I, mean, I, say that, I don't love it. I don't go up and go, I must go to work. It's wonderful. But I don't, I don't mind it. I do, I do quite enjoy it. So it's not bad for me. But I did think to myself, you know, 
what am I going to do? Am I really going to do this for another 15 or so years? And obviously, I'm, I'm very much, I work for an amount of money per hour, I get paid per hour, so it's very much a sort of um, restricted thing. So I've, I've always done things outside of that to try and earn different bits of money and create things that work for me. And I suppose I've always been intrigued with the internet and the way it's connected to so many people and therefore everything can scale so quickly. And I always thought to myself, I'm often doing things just for the one instance, you know, me at work for my hours or, you know, me making and creating a house, but it can only be one house, one at a time. And it, it's sort of a bit limited like that. And then I look at the internet and, and think of that thing where you can just provide something and it can be connected to the planet which you know then i realized the sort of how quickly that can scale and i thought to myself surely i want to can i can i get into that can i do something like that and i suppose with a little bit of time and a little bit of realization of are you going to do something else i sort of thought to myself i need to look into that so i did sort of probably at 50 ish start searching for opportunities and that and how i could tap into that okay cool so presumably that's when you came across SFM and was there anything else you came across then? No, um, no, it was just probably got heavily into my self-development again sort of thing. So, you know, Tony Robbins and all them sort of people. So I got into all that and a, and a bit of um, subconscious mind stuff. And so I was, I was doing bits like that. So I was sort of doing that motivational into that. And then these other things crop up and the SFM cropped up and it was suddenly this sort of like, you know like the internet opportunity they're like oh wow you know and, and um the person that i i was listening to was sort of like you can do it while you've got a full-time job you know what i mean you can do it so the transition works and everything like that and i thought to myself do you know what that's hang on you know and i just i went for it so i just went down there clicked on the link and watched them videos i mean there was lots of bits of not all skepticism but lots of doubt there some was it like oh is it a scam obviously you've come up with that one and you so you're just reading in trying to make sure that it, it's not anything like that but it wasn't just that it's the oh am i a bit old you know oh can i do all the tech you know i mean I, i'm on a computer all day doing excel spreadsheets and and normal stuff but i'm not a by a long shot a whiz at all i'm i feel a bit you know not good at that so i thought will i really be able to get all of that you know and so yeah so it's those sort of like doubts but as i got in and i sort of saw those couple of things saw some genuine people that came across really genuine and thought to myself you know now they really feel as though they were coming from a similar place so it wasn't smooth i call them up from my era it's second-hand car salesman you know with a tight you know it, it wasn't all, it was real people if you like just talking about coming from a certain way and then now moving on through this journey at all different stages so some people just a few months ahead of yourself and just got in and excited others a year in and doing well and others you know gone done really well and yet they're telling me three years ago they were up london thinking oh what am i doing this for i don't want to do it so you, you've got all of those examples to draw off and see and that gave you that comfort that you were in the right place yeah so yeah yeah so you basically resonated with where they were in terms of where you were at yeah where they were and where they what they'd come from and then sort of could see like different lengths of journey which sort of gave you that confidence that it was something that you needed to be in but the thing for me with it was when you get on the journey i don't I, rather i'm coming going too early on this but for me I did it because of the um, education on, you know, starting an online business. That was what I clicked on it for. Yeah. But very soon in it, with it's very much aligned with self-development, the coaching, all these other things in it. That when the moment I got into it and the way it gets you to look at your inside, so to check that you're right for online business and you're right and you've got the right motivation set, it gives you all these... Um, you know, videos and self-help to look at and, and look up. And when you start looking at that and looking at your life, you really start to prioritize things and put them again into, um, you know, portion them up. So work should be like this, right? Have I got time for family? You're making time for that. You know, oh, my things are, oh, what's my fun? Make sure I get my fun in. What's my now development as, and I should be developing, however old I am still developing. So it made me look at those different sectors. And I think I was doing, because I say I've done self-development and everything like that, but I think I was doing 
I say reasonably well. Like I wasn't going, oh, I haven't done any of this, but there was gentle reminders in there that I needed to expand on, for example, pleasing myself a bit with, you know, making sure, take the time, my, I want a paddleboard, paddleboard. Don't just do the next event with the next son and the, you know, <laughs> because you can very quickly use up all your time doing those sort of things with a different work. But giving little pockets for all the important things, family time, date night with the missus and stuff like that you know it's little things that you, you don't get around to do but suddenly say so no I've got to do them and it so it made me look at those different areas and some of them needed expanding strengthening and, and doing and, and that's what I've done they weren't not there but I definitely suddenly made made the most made more of them yeah I was going to ask you because you, you sort of made um, the statement about all of a sudden the boys didn't need you so much so you all of a sudden had this time which a lot of people would go, nice one, I can put my feet up. You didn't. You were like, right, now what can I do? <laughs> so so yeah. in terms of the self-development, when did that sort of start? You know, was that a, a later in life? Have you always been into self-development? No, I always say this, and I've got a book behind me, actually. Um, when you think of self-development, so this one here, I'll get this one out. This is Awaken the Giant Within by Anthony Robbins. Yeah. I, I read this when I was 19. Yeah. So, you know, obviously over 30 odd years ago, I've got my little notes in there and stuff. So I've always been into it, um, but I wouldn't say um, practiced it for 30 years, but I dabbled a little bit. I, I think I'm definitely into it more now and more religiously all the time than I've ever been before. Because I think I just dabbled, especially being young, then getting taken over with the the next thing, you know, I, I worked abroad for seven years, you know, because we wanted to go and see a bit of the world and everything. So we just went away and, and moved and did that. No, what then you come abroad, back. Sean? Um, well, we travelled in different countries. I travelled through India for about seven months. Um, I got to, uh, went to the Philippines and then we went, ended up in Hong Kong. I worked in Hong Kong <laughs> for 18 months, building the airport out there. Um, then we did a bit of traveling in China um, and um, Nepal and everything like that. Then went to Australia, um, worked in Australia for about a year and a half, I think, uh, just under a yeah, year and a half. Um, and then came back traveling through um, Indonesia and everything like that, through the islands. So travel around Australia and come, and come made our way back again. So we, we sort of, I've always, that was doing that, got back to London, started a family, had a family, you know, while I was building up to that, you know, just buying, out, buying a house, doing it up, moving, moving, moving. Um, and so, yeah, there's always been, I've, I've never been any good at putting my feet up. I don't think I've ever done that really. So it was only a question of the moment I was going to have some time, I was going to think of something else to do, <laughs> which obviously I did. And, and the, you talk about the, um, you know, the pockets of doing stuff that you really enjoy, which, which a lot of people will put to one side because you've got to do the day job, then you've got to do the kids, then you've got to do the chores, then you've got to do this, and then you're knackered and you can't be asked. Yeah. So um, how did that, was that just through, you know, entering SFM or is that something that you'd already started to acknowledge was, was important? Um, well, I think areas I'd, um, I'd sort of always tried it a bit, like n knowing you've got to spend quality time with the wife, you know, the wife or your partner. I, I sort of knew that and I've been trying to do it, but like most people, perhaps not, but I suppose, in the last two or three years, I've realized the importance of having to do it, not just that would be a good idea and then not getting around to it, realizing that it can't be missed, you know? So it's little things now that I do that, that I won't not do because I know ultimately it's not in line with how I want to be, you know? I know how I want to be. And to do that, I've got to have all those things, you know, in, in the right amount of time and, and, and have all them things in my life for, for me to feel fulfilled and okay. Otherwise I'll feel as though something's missing. And I'm very aware of that now. Whereas before I would have just been, yeah, n not picked myself up on it. Was there, was there a sort of moment where you, you sort of got that clarity? Because I think for me, I mean, I've been doing self-development a long time and uh, I've got more and more spiritual, certainly since losing my dad back in 2006. Um, and I've been on a, a weird and wonderful journey emotionally, relationship wise and all the rest of it. I think it's only, again, for me, I mean, I'm 46. I would say probably in the last 18 months, 
where it's really come to home that why am I not? Because like I, I'm learning to play the guitar and I like singing and I like photography and all that and yoga and, and all that. Why am I not making that the first thing I do almost? I mean, sometimes that's not possible in the day, but why am I not giving more priority to the stuff that actually floats my boat rather than, and I, yeah, and I think for me that came via a bit of SFM education, I think. Um, but also various of the books that I've read and like Michael Singer. I don't know if you, you're into Michael Singer. Um, yeah. Yeah, with the surrender experiment and all that sort of stuff. And I, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I don't know, I think just one day it just hit me. And it's, all, it's also helped by being with people that you resonate with as well, people that are sort of like-minded and, and you're all sort of feeling the same and, and you're picking up tidbits from each other. Was there any, was there any particular do you think thing for you that made you think shit i need to sort this out um well it was while doing sfm and then it was the bits that that led to like looking at your, your you know your ideal day you know and the the bit of work that you do when you're going through i'm trying to think what it's related to is that um not Liechtenstein, someone where you, you actually look at certain things and, and you look at your ideal day and your ideal week. And, and that one was a big one for me because it sort of said, you know, if you, because it's very easy to set a goal, you know, and they get quite big and it's out there. And then you sort of make a couple of plans to get there, but it's not really, um, you know, oh, and then two months, I oh, didn't quite get there, but you adapt it, everything like that. Whereas what, what I think made me realise was that it's, it doesn't matter how long it is, even if it's only a week away, how are you going to enjoy the time getting to that first step even? You know what I mean? And that would be right, you know, I mean, for me, it's, oh, are you keeping fit? Yes, you're you getting up and you're exercising. You'll actually feel better and be able to do more if you get up and do a bit of exercise. So really, it's a no-brainer. You should do it just to spur you on to be able to do all the other things you want to do. But it's all them things, putting them in. So... That the importance of that was, yeah, it was some of the trainings and what the trainings led to, the readings and stuff that you did um, on on your ideal day, you know, and, and making it realise what you know what you think about, you know. So that's the sort of um, law of attraction stuff. Do you know what I mean? About you've got to focus on the right stuff and, and not realising that even though you sort of think it's like the think positive. And you were told that many years ago, do you know what I mean? Think positive. And, you know, the moment you start thinking about a certain car and you think about it, you'll suddenly see it all. But you never really realised until a few years ago when they've now that they've done all these studies and everything like that, that, that actually it does make you find that thing. So what you're thinking about, you, you actually do end up looking for that. So you find it. Yeah. yeah. If you forget that you're looking for it and you just go like that, you, you, you might not get there. Whereas you've got to. And, and I'm very aware now that it's everything that you say, everything that you think, do and the way you're looking at it makes a difference to what you're going to see and therefore what you're going to get. You know what I mean? And, and the massive thing that, that you're in control, the only thing you'll ever be in control of, which I think is an amazing. The only thing is how you react. Yeah, and what you, so it doesn't matter what is going on, how wonderful, how rubbish, or whatever, and it might be someone being really horrible to you, or whatever. You can choose how to be, and then if you don't think about, oh, I must retaliate or I must knock them on the head because they're being really nasty, and you actually just think, what is the best thing for me in this situation? And it might be, oh, okay, leave you over there, and let's go over here because I'm now going to do something completely different then. You know, it's that mentality of knowing that, you know, you can respond to anything, you know, how you want. And, and the importance of that and what you're aiming for and what you're focusing on. Yeah, I suppose that really did change, has changed in the last couple of years. I didn't really, it didn't really sink in that, you know, you can't, I mean, you can't afford to be negative. You know, you've got to be positive. You've got to find a way of looking at it in the right light. You know, it's no, you know, and that I didn't know that before. Yeah. Okay. Didn't place as much importance. So, so obviously you've been on your journey in terms of where you are, like, so over the last couple of years, what, what things do you think have come about as a result of your sort of change in mindset and the, and the stuff that you've been doing? Um, 
well as I say, I, I, um, making making sure that I dropped one day at work, so one day from home, I wouldn't have done that if I hadn't have done this. That was just something where I really pushed and said I could do it and said it could happen, make and like made it happen. I probably wouldn't have done that. Um, doing, you know, enjoying now regular cycling a couple of times a week, paddle boarding three or four times a week. You know, I do do yoga again, so I've got that. I do it on my paddle board as well, but I do a class once a week, not not during the current situation but normally I do and I'm always doing that at home so yeah I'm definitely doing all those things that I want to do and another important I've just put them into my life and made sure that they happen so I think I am um yes yeah, so I've got a better balance I have I have I have addressed my work-life balance you know what I mean and, and the yeah. different areas okay and in terms of um obviously you you were looking for something else in terms of making money elsewhere is it something that you actually want to replace the day job or are you still happy to do the day job? Um, well, I, do, I, I would like it to replace the day job, um, but at the moment it's still, it's not, it's not earning enough money. I, I'm, I'm going to say it for, for me, I mean, I, I do earn a reasonable amount of money, so I, I've got to replace a reasonable income. You know, I must say reasonable, probably a bit more, you know what I mean? So I, I don't just want a bit, I do want it to, to a, and, and it's not doing that yet. So at the moment, it's not an option to, to go that way. Um, but I'm at the point where I'm learning all the time and things, you know, and it, like we all know, it could suddenly crescendo into that thing, but it isn't at the moment. So I won't be giving it up this month. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But if I might be in a different position in one year's time maybe it'll be different and it'll have an, an income attached to it that I suddenly say, oh, actually, you know, I could do it now. Yeah. And but what about, know. what about the coaching side of it? Cause obviously I know that you're, um, cause you're, you do, you're mentoring already at work, but I also know that you're looking yeah. to expand into more coaching. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do mentoring in the, in the, in the group that we're in for people who are that little bit behind me. So we're mentoring, you know, people who are, are coming in and, and, and learning the things that, that, I learned, you know, 18 months ago and a year ago. Um, so I'm doing that. Um, and obviously I've just joined a coaching thing where we're looking, cause we, I did a coaching course for the SFM, the brand incubator, and it was a really amazing process that really I got so much out of. Um, and when I did it, it, it always seemed to me that was, it was about branding it was supposedly, but I never saw it as that. And it, for me, the draw was um, looking and finding what you've got inside you to, to bring out and make sure you're making the most of. Um, and now what's happened is that the coaching that I'm getting into is something where it's looking at it more from that personal point of view and, and developing people. And having looked at what's really important to me and everything like that, I am always, I always want to, I mean, I want to make the best for myself and, and do the best myself and I'm very driven, but I actually want other people to live their best life and, and, and do everything, you know, and, and I want to help people. I help all my family, my extended family. I, you know, I'm always there, you know, what people want. I really want to be there for people and, and help them in ways that I can, you know, I've been around a bit now and I know a couple of things and I'd like to pass that on. And, um, you know, I, I'm the person that reads the instructions and I know out of today's world, there's not many of us that still do that. So I, I do tend to know a bit about, whatever I'm getting into because I've probably read the instructions so it's that it's that sort of thing where now you know I'm keen to get into that and as I say on obviously there's a money side to that and there there could be but it's more from a that I would be doing something that really is aligned with what I want to do you know I want to help people and I want them to live their best life and I know that and I would have done I came into SFM to earn an amount of money and that actually hasn't happened in 18 months. But boy, am I glad that I did it because what I've got out is way more valuable than the money that I thought I might earn in there. And, and that what I've got out of it is fine tuning my life. So I've got it that much better because just these little tweaks to get those bits that are a bit too small and not enough, to, a bit bigger makes it, you know, really nice. The, the things that we've, I don't want to go over them again, but the things we've been talking about, about mindset and everything like that, you know, that, the way, the way you then approach life and, and people around you is that much uh, more receptive to harmony and, and a, you know, and an adventurous and um, 
yeah, self-expressing and, you know, something that's going to create what you want because you're suddenly focusing on all them things. So, and I wouldn't have had that. And that, that, so that's been a great thing for me. And I've actually got the opportunity. I can actually think I can create that for other people, mm. making their, tweaking their little bits. And it's all different for everyone, but tweaking what's important to them and, you know, in, in their situation. And, and I just know that those little tweaks make all the difference. So um, to be in that space where, you know, I, I can do that is great. And obviously if I end up, if there's some money there and everything like that, then that would be great. Um, you know, because that's the ultimate reason, but it's not, it's not my ultimate thing is that it, it's doing something that's aligned with, you know, what really makes me tick. And, and have you seen, I guess the obvious answer is yes, but have you seen a difference in your own immediate uh, surrounding in terms of your family, the change, I suppose the changes that you put yourself through, that you wanted to put yourself through, you wanted to improve things. Have you seen it that filter out? Um, yeah, yes, yeah, m most definitely. And it's, it's definitely gone. Um, we're all benefiting from that bit for me, because obviously I feel, you know, um, that much better and, and everything attuned. But we are, you know, obviously I focus on my other close family and, and, and help them with the different bits that they're doing. And it does make a difference. And the, the coach and a couple of the courses and things that I've been on for some of that, that some of them have been applicable and my other half's gone and my two children. So they've gone. So, and then some of the courses, it's a little bit heavy for them, but you know, it's good because it gives them just drops a few things in for later on when they're really ready for, for something. And they'll, so yes, we're definitely, and we, and we use, different language now and um the way we look at something uh, not just as a problem but just as what's happening here and we've got better tools to look at it and go so what's this then what's actually going on for us then what you know and we, we wouldn't have done that before it just would have been a problem yeah you know, whereas you know when you're all talking like that and you're you know yeah you use a different sets of language and you're straight away on to well what can we do with this yeah, I think you're talking about Landmark there, are you? You've done Landmark. Yes, yeah, I did Landmark, yes, yeah, yeah. And your yeah. kids did Landmark as well, did they? Yes, yeah, two teenagers, yeah, 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 and, and my other half. So, yeah, it was, um, it was, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was good, yeah. No, I really enjoyed it. It's a bit time-consuming at times and yeah. all-encompassing and got a little bit, um, um, so yeah, it did get too much, you know, as in just like too much to do, you know, I was like struggling to do everything, you know, not that I minded, it wasn't not good doing it, it was, it was the time thing, it yeah. did eventually take up a lot of time. It so. is a commitment, isn't it? But yeah, you talking about the language and the, and the different ways of looking at things, I certainly got that for myself. Landmark is, it's not for everyone. Um, and I, I loved it, but at the same time, there was parts of it that, that rubbed me up the wrong way. But I think they, they like to tell you that, well, that's because that's what you actually need to deal with. And I'm like, mm, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it's, it's certainly improved my relationships anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think with that, you've got, to, um, you've got to take what's right for you, you know, out of it. You're not being indoctrinated into a sort of, you, you know, a little, a certain you. It, it, you've just got to take what you want from it, I think, yeah. rather than, you know, and, and get out of it what you can and, and then stop when you've had enough <laughs> yeah okay um so i think i think what i always ask my guests is if there was somebody you know if, if you know whoever's listening to this podcast if they're sort of sat sort of feeling like there might be more but they don't quite know what or you know they're they're, they're cruising along in life but they're not quite fulfilled similar to what you were saying what what would be the the one thing or the two things that you would like to say that might get them thinking a bit more and that things are possible? Because a lot of people feel stuck, don't they? Um, and don't know where to start. Yeah, yeah. But I think, I mean, I think a, a lot of people at certain times in their life think, oh, I wonder if there could be more. Um, but then it's, the, the, the difference is, is just, are you going to do something about it? because I think there's nothing worse than, than regret. And you've just got to put yourself and think, well, I could not do anything. I could think, oh, maybe I could do another job that I really liked, but uh, you know, I, I won't bother yet. And you don't try that in 10 years time, 
you're going to be in the subtle five years time. You're going to be in the same job, probably with the same feeling, only worse and, and less time to enjoy a changed way. So I think it, it's just, you know, it's, it's only making that first step and actually just doing something, whatever it is in front of you. If you feel as though something's not quite right, and maybe you could do this, then yeah, just look into something, look into it, read up on it. I mean, there's so much available now for information, probably too much in one way, but I mean, you've just got to decipher it down, start looking at things and, and just find your, your way, watch a few videos, read up on a few things. And the moment you get something, just say to yourself, it's got to be worth a go. Because the, the, the other option is to do nothing. Keep searching, forever looking and not doing nothing. Or just look for a bit and then think, I'm going to try something. And that can be, like we've said, it doesn't have to be your job, your work. It could be a sport, a pastime, uh, you know, it, anything it could be, you know, a time with your family. Just do it and say to yourself, well, yeah, I probably don't do enough. So what I'm going to do, I'll tell you what, I'm going to, and you literally do it this week, right, I'm going to, three times I'm going to spend time with my children. Right? And you stop and you go and take an hour. You don't do anything else and you go for an hour and whatever they're doing, you join in with it. You might try and get them to play a ball game or you might just be with them on their PlayStation or on their whatever or outside in the garden with them. But just go and do it. And it's amazing how quickly you can sort these things out if you just do it. And if you do it with little bits like that, like I'm saying, you could do it with your, if you're, depending on what situation you're in, you might be over a partner. How about quality time with your partner? One hour, three times a week. Or your children, one hour, three times a week. You just do that and see in one or two weeks' time how much better you feel. And wow, that was great. That is how easy it is if you do it. But if you don't do it and you don't do it, you just won't have quality time with your children because you're too busy and you can't get around to it and it just doesn't happen. Where all you just make that change and you do it. And like if it is a job or something, look something up, then you're going to go on it. Go on some training course, learn about something, try and put something into place, put some energy into it, a lot, a bit of time for it. And, and then just, just do it because you'll, as I say, I, you don't even know where it's going to lead you. Like where that one led me has done another three, three avenues that I'm so pleased I'm down and I just clearly wouldn't have been if I hadn't have just gone for it and done something. Yeah. But it actually didn't get, hasn't yet got the ultimate thing that I went to do it for, but it's given, changed my life and given me a whole nother avenues that I'm, I'm just so glad I've got. It's made me do it and take the bit of action. So that's what I'd say to people. Just think of something or whatever it is you need to just get on and try it. Do the small things first because you'll realise that is that how easy it is. Yeah, that is. Just you know, do it. Yeah, I mean, what I'm hearing there, and that I totally resonate, obviously. Um, but my personal challenge was always racing. I was always looking to get out of the rat race, so I was like always looking for the get uh, rich quick schemes and, and all that sort of stuff for years and years and years. And I think the education at SFM was the, the, the first point in educating me that you've got to slow down to speed up almost. Um, yeah. You know, you're too busy doing this, 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 and this, and you don't think you've got enough hours in the day, and then your family life suffers, and your kids suffer, and your hobbies suffer, and your fitness suffers, and all that sort of stuff. And because, because I don't know, you're in a race, but mm -hmm. whose fucking race are you in? Because the only person that's trying to like crack the whip is me, and mm -hmm. there's nobody else saying, Mel, you've got to be a millionaire by a week on Tuesday, yeah. but I was kind of saying it to myself and it's absolutely crazy. So the, the whole sort of slowing down and, and dedicating that special time to whether it be family or to yourself. Mm. I think a lot of people would sort of maybe start twist, you know, twitching at that because they're like, well, no, if I do that, then I, I haven't got time to do what I'm trying to achieve on the, the financial side. But I, I, I think the reason why I'm, I'm sort of, um, elongating what you've said is to sort of try and get the point across that shit needs to happen because if it doesn't you're going to continue on the hamster wheel and burn yourself out and maybe end up divorced and, and maybe end up you know in, in all sorts of situations whereas if you just we've all got the same amount of minutes in the day mm. and you look at someone like Richard Branson who's got the same minutes as we have and obviously he's achieved god knows what but 
he's utilized himself better, but he's very meditative. He's very tranquil guy as well as being the, the full on. Yeah. And I think that that speaks volumes. You've got to, and he's very much a family man. You've got to put the, the important stuff in place and then allow the other stuff to, to swim around it, if you like. Yeah. And it isn't a race. You don't have to do it all by tomorrow. And you yeah. don't have to feel guilty for putting your feet up with the kids for an hour. No. Um, so thank you, Sean. You, um, you said that perfectly. I just wanted to, I was just getting this feeling that, yeah, but there's, there's somebody listening out there and I could feel it that is going, yeah, but how am I going to get time to do everything else if I, if I put all that into place, you know? But it's so important. You've got to slow down to speed up. Yeah. And you, you do. I mean, it's, it's like what they say about work, isn't it? You know, if you work for like nine hours straight and don't take any breaks, you won't do as much work as if you take three half hour slots in there and get up and go and do something else and a bit energetic, bit of energy, move around. You'll actually come back and produce more work yeah. in less time because you'll be more focused. You'll be more there. Everyone knows that just doing that for that amount of time, you're, you're lagging and you're spending the last five hours drained, worn out, not really focusing enough, not really getting it. And, oh, but I did nine hours. You know, you could have done five and yeah. had an hour in between, <laughs> you know, and, and had an hour off each time and, and, and done better. So, yeah, it puts you in the right frame of mind. You know, as I say, putting them other things will make you feel in the right frame of mind, will get your right focus, will be aiming at the right stuff, and you'll see that stuff, you'll go and get it, it'll come to you. It's, it's that, that scenario. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, I think we'll, uh, we'll draw this to a close. Thank you so much. Um, if anybody wants to find out a little bit more about Sean, Sean, where can they find you? Uh, yeah, no, well, I've got a website where you can look up um, uh, worklifechange.com. It is what it says. That's what I was looking to do. And that will give you a little bit of um, an inkling into um, what I was thinking and, and how I sort of made those first um, steps. So, yeah, check out my website if you want. And you can reach out to me on there. You can email me any questions you've got. It's not a problem. <coughs> Excuse me. That's brilliant. Well, thanks again, Sean. I really appreciate um, having you on today and uh, sharing your story. It's been lovely and inspirational. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, no, thanks ever so much for the opportunity and asking me. That's great, Mel. Thanks ever so much. Cheers. All of a sudden, I've got this bloody cough. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. Am I recording again? Yeah, I think.